The extreme acts of the massed rioters were shocking and the level of vandalism was unprecedented. Those were the words of Kerry Lam, the chief executive of the, of the Hong Kong SAR government on Saturday. Escalating violence followed the announcement of a law prohibiting protesters to wear masks. The measure was passed using the emergency regulations ordinance in a bid to, quote, create a deterrent effect against mass violent protesters and and rioters, but it was blamed for triggering more violence. Is it really the case? How does one judge the intention and effectiveness of such a measure? I'm joined from Hong Kong by Lauren Ma, barrister and chairman of the Hong Kong Legal Exchange Foundation, and in the Beijing studio by Wang Wenwen, a reporter with Global Times. Welcome to both of you to the point. Now, according to the SAR government, um, the prohibition to on face covering regulation bans people from covering up their faces in public meetings and processions regulated under the public order ordinance and uh, uh, unlawful and unauthorized assemblies as well as riots. Uh, Mr. Ma, some lawyers uh, have made an application to the High Court in Hong Kong for an interim injunction, injunction which was rejected. These lawyers say the anti-mask law would constitute, quote, disproportionate interference with the right to a peaceful assembly and the freedom of expression for Hong Kong citizens. Um, Mr. Ma, do you understand why they would have such fears? Um, my understanding that it's an anti-mask law but doesn't prevent people, doesn't prohibit people from attending legal and peaceful gatherings. Well, exactly, because the, the, this is called a proportionality test where the court has to scrutinize any restriction of public rights by a legislation or government decision. Now, in Hong Kong, we have the, uh, when you, before you go for a protest, you've got to apply to the police for a notice of no objection before you can conduct an assembly lawfully. Now, this uh, was subject to legal challenge to the, to the highest court in Hong Kong and was ruled constitutional because the restriction was not disproportionate to the rights of, the pe of, the pe of people's uh, right to peaceful protest. I was, uh, have thought that um, this um, anti-mask law would also have the same outcome um, as uh, it would be, it would not be disproportionate to restrict people's freedom of assembly because people can still come out to protest, to demonstrate with their full, with, without any face covering. Hmm. And that, if, unless you want to be a, a criminal and conduct criminal activities, you should be, a, be beware of these, this law, otherwise you shouldn't be cons of your concern. But what's the intention, Mr. Ma, of the people who come out and say these and, and use such concerns such, um, to oppose the law, knowing that there have been um, f almost four months of street violence, uh, a lot of it committed by people who wear these masks and uh, a lot of it under, under the protection of uh, anonymity, Mr. Ma? Well, the, you have to understand the political um, uh, climate in Hong Kong. The pan Democrats are always behind these protesters and supporting their activities. Um, even they have gone on to breach the law. And this is exactly the 24 pan Democratic legislative councillors who are parliamentarians in Hong Kong to apply for judicial review in Hong Kong court so as to, to restrain or strike down these. Uh, anti-mask law. So they are really doing it politically instead of having a, a very legitimate legal concern. Mm -hmm. Ms. Wang, let me go to you. You were twice in Hong Kong over the past few months covering what has uh, been happening on the streets of Hong Kong uh, each time for a week or two. So you saw what was happening and how things were progressing. And now that we have this anti-mask law, by the way, there are many countries in the world where such a law is in place. For instance, in Germany, where it is clearly um, illegal to go on the street to attend any um, public gathering or legal gathering, peaceful gathering, or whatever you want to do, you are not allowed to cover your face. To your understanding, why has such law been so controversial in the eyes of uh, some people in Hong Kong when it's enacted uh, at this particular moment? Uh, first, I think uh, in Hong Kong, the society has been enjoying too much freedom for 
uh, for a long time, uh, and they think uh, they have the right to uh, to do protests and to do demonstrations. And right now, I think they have no uh, no idea about what um, what uh, what protests are illegal and what uh, activities are violent. I, th I think the, these protesters are uh, confusing these uh, behaviors. And also right now the political climate in Hong Kong uh, is, uh, is very complicated. And I think these protesters are trying to use this moment, this uh, critical juncture to, to, to pursue their political agenda. Yes. Um, there are some people who are challenging this uh, law, not just by, because of the intention of it, but also by the uh, so-called ineffectiveness of this law, as we have seen over the night of Saturday and uh, Sunday as well. There has been an uh, even higher level of violence. So, Mr. Ma, let me go to you. Um, how come, what is your understanding of the kind of backlash that this law has uh, suffered once it has been into place? Why it has triggered a seemingly higher degree of violence if the scale has not been bigger? Well, to be honest, this law is neither here or there. If it is to, if the objective of, an, of enacting this law is to prevent people from conducting riots, that would not be sufficient because the maximum imprisonment for uh, breaching the uh, anti-mask law is one year. Whereas if you go on protest for unlawful assembly, that's three years imprisonment. And if you conduct riots, um, in, a, in an unlawful assembly, that's 10 years imprisonment. And criminal damages is 10 years imprisonment. So if, if all these protesters already committing a very, very serious crime, subject to over 10 years imprisonment, why would a law that would only have one year imprisonment deter them from committing further crimes? So then, so then are you saying that this was uh, unnecessary legislation? No, but you see what the effect is. Once this law has come out, people got more violent. And the international tie, international opinion, suddenly turned last night overnight against these protesters. International media, international tie, actually was starting to turn against the protesters instead of keep focusing on against the Hong Kong government, against the Chinese government. So it is a good point because you can see that today, actually this morning, uh, the media tycoon Jimmy Lai, who was the proxy of American CIA, I would, thought, I would have thought, have issued a statement to the protesters and asking them to stop because the public, the Hong Kong citizen, would really get into dislike of their activities. And, and also the international media, inter, international tie is now really turning against them. Do you think the people, the protesters, would listen to this kind of messages? I mean, um, it seems to me, for instance, um, after the, the issuance of such a law, when masses of people come out wearing masks, the police simply can't do much, right? In, the Ch in Chinese, we have a saying, fa bu zhe zhong, fa bu zhe zhong. We have so many people who are offending, uh, who are breaking the law, you simply can't enforce it. Is that also the challenge what the police are facing in Hong Kong, Mr. Ma, again. That's exactly what the police is facing for the past four months. If you have you know, hundreds of thousands of people coming out and uh, breaching the law, Hong Kong has the maximum of 30,000 police officers and you can't have all of them on duty at the same time. So, but what is, what the, 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 the um, turning point I can see is tonight, actually tonight in Hong Kong, there has only been one or two riots um, instead of a mass scale riots uh, covering the entire uh, city last night. So today, tonight, is actually quieting down. So I would say that it is actually taking effect, the, 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 um, the uh, Jimmy Lai's statement as well as the international tie. Hmm. Um, Ms. Wang, tell us a bit about your personal experience. I mean, you, you were covering Hong Kong. From what you were seeing, for instance, the, the actions of the people who are wearing masks, um, what kind of challenge are they posing to the law enforcement officers who, as Mr. Ma was pointing out, only a very limited number and they are, you know, they can only be at one place at one time, whereas the, the protesters can appear in different locations at the same time, for instance, and sometimes in, in very, you know, flash mob kind of fashion, Ms. Wang. 
Uh, yeah, I think uh, they, um, uh, for one thing, when they uh, wear masks, they just m uh, make people scary. Um, I think the, uh, the ordinary Hong Kong... You mean make people scared about them? Yes, yes, yes. Especially uh, uh, foreigners and uh, tourists, yeah, and those who oppose their political views and their actions. And uh, for the other, the, uh, it is difficult for the Hong Kong police to, uh, to uh, effect, uh, effectively implement the law to, to arrest them because when they wear uh, masks, uh, it's difficult for police to identify them. And, uh, and nowadays, they just uh, adopt the hit and run strategies, uh, which means they, uh, they uh, uh, smash uh, stores and uh, hit people, assault people, then they just run away. So it's difficult for the police to track them. Um, in terms of um, the kind of uh, violence that your colleague, who became known nationwide because of what he suffered at the Hong Kong airport, in terms of what he had to deal with, how much of the kind of um, torture he was subject to was kind of encouraged and emboldened by the fact that many of the perpetrators were not recognizable? Uh, yeah, I think uh, a lot of uh, protesters who assaulted him uh, uh, at, the, at the airport uh, uh, wore masks at that time. And uh, uh, as far as I know, only four of the protesters uh, were uh, arrested so far. And uh, I, uh, I heard from the, uh, uh, the press conference of the Hong Kong police, uh, and the police officer said it's difficult for them to, uh, to arrest those people who wear masks. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Ma, let me go back to you once again. So do you think the relative quiet in Hong Kong tonight, do you think it's only temporary? Do you think things... Uh, still risk turning for the worse, or do you think it's really a turning point? I think you have to look at the larger perspective to understand why there's such a riot in Hong Kong because of the Americans behind it. Um, they use proxies in Hong Kong. They have uh, CIA agents uh, coaching and directing the and coordinating the protesters in Hong Kong. Now, if, if, if I've heard rumors that the um, American uh, president was... Uh, pretty angry with the director of the CIA because they, the, these, act, these protests were actually ignited a lot of patriotism to in, the, in, in the mainland, particularly amongst the, the youths in the mainland. Um, and, and it has actually united a lot of people in the mainland. But of course, um, so, so, the, so the, the president was not happy about the CIA's operation in Hong Kong and now probably particularly when the international okay. news tie, media tie is turning against them, it, it, it would, it, they probably would have to, uh, probably stopped the funding uh, of, of the protests. Well, what I know is, I don't know whether it is rumor or not whether uh, the, the president all, um, really criticized the CIA head, but uh, it is true that a lot of people who are watching things unfold on the mainland are feeling very indignant of the kind of uh, indiscriminate violence, uh, especially committed to uh, people from the mainland or people who dare to, op um, from Hong Kong, but dare to express an opposite view and uh, also seeing the, th the, the fact that uh, many ordinary people in Hong Kong are being beaten up on the street for just expressing a different view or sometimes, you know, mistakenly um, taken by the protesters for being on the opposite side. So I think it is only uh, with time that more and more people will stand up and say, look, enough violence is enough violence, that uh, violence is not going to solve the problem that Hong Kong faces. We have to leave it there. Many thanks to Lawrence Ma from the Hong Kong Legal Exchange Foundation and one woman reporter from Global Times.